Okay, so one of the things with 12-step uh, groups is um, like, like I go to certain 12-step groups, <coughs> I say things like I'm a compulsive overeater in the groups. And when something is said and it's completely meaningless, it doesn't have any power. Uh, like, I could say, I am a spinach leaf. Like, I could repeat, I am a spinach leaf, I am a spinach leaf, I am a spinach leaf. I'm not afraid of becoming a spinach leaf. <laughs> I am not afraid. I've never heard this before. <laughs> like, I will say, like... I'm, I was I'm, trying to figure out what you were saying, Zephyr. I, like, I, I say in these groups, like, I'm a compulsive overeater. <laughs> But I'm not afraid if I keep saying I'm a compulsive overeater. It's like it's, it has no fear. Uh, I have no fear of turning into a, I a want donut. To, I, I, yeah, but you no, you didn't go. You didn't go crawling into a twelve-step program with I have a spinach leaf and then get the story. <laughs> you never started off at that point of being a spinach leaf. Yourself. <laughs> you may have been a donut. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning yeah. Well, you see, what, when you make something though, when you make something. When something holds no meaning from it, it has, you have no fear around it. Like, uh, so there's still some kind of fear of return uh, there, or fear that if I say something, that I will become that thing. Um, so, like, I've been saying I'm a class of overeater in these type of groups for 10 years, and I'm 10 years absent. So, that's not, that's not, Problem. Um, but that does not exactly hold true for you at this point in time, though, does it? Yeah. No, it, it doesn't hold. I mean, I, I, I'm not overeating. No, that's what I mean. So if it, if it doesn't hold true for you at this point in time, yes. what is the point if we can kind of keep saying it? it, it it's, it's a thing of like people get identification and come out of denial mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on things. Like if someone's drinking alcohol, and you say to them, and, and, and they, 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 they will say, I'm not an alcoholic. You know, like, the whole family will say, like, you're drinking, you can't walk straight, and you crashed three cars last week. And you say to them, and you say, well, you did all of that, are you an alcoholic? They'll say, I'm not an alcoholic, actually, that was just a bad week. So it's, it's, the, it's the ownership of, uh, it's the ownership that there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Now... Also, within the 12-step fellowships, I'd say there is a, a level of spiritual intention when someone who's recovered shares that with another person, which means there's spiritual protection. You know, it's like there, there is grace. Like when I go into a room and say I'm 10 years recovered from compulsive overeating, there, there's no fear. It's like there's a field of grace with you because the intention of that is to serve. Is to serve, so it does, there, there, there isn't any, any problems. There's no fear of the word, um, or, or it having, you know, that the words are the power. It's like different. When the ego is active and it believes things, and it gives meaning to things, then it's the ego's giving meaning and belief to the thing which creates the problem. When when one is that which is not, uh, when it has been, when something has been rendered meaningless. Or valueless, you can say it till you're blue in the face. It, it doesn't. It doesn't create a problem. So you're repeating it basically, severely in order to be of service yes, to others, or that's you're right. repeating mm -hmm. it because no, repeating it to that be is kind of really what you're supposed yeah. to well, do in those groups. Well, yes, you're supposed to. You're supposed to do it. Uh, it's part of the group culture, but it's also people with recovery say, you know, they might mm -hmm. start their sharing saying I'm compulsive overeater, but then say I'm ten years recovered from compulsive overeating. But the question then I could add yeah. there, which is, I mean, I can understand the culture as having been in that culture for yeah. many, many years. Yeah. Mm. Different places, I might see in some fellowships, I will say I am a grateful member of this fellowship and I use that as an alternative when yeah. there's no social taboo, but in some fellowships there's a bit of a taboo about it. Yeah. Mm. And, and even to the point in, um, if somebody says, this is one I've heard in AA, is sometimes some people, if they've gone through the steps in a certain way, they'll say, I am a recovered Mm -hmm. Alcoholic exactly. with the, um, okay. yeah. with the, and 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 that create people turn their heads at that they don't mm -hmm. like that there is a taboo oh, with that even to say they're recovered, and and so what would be it's like so while you're not in the while we're not in the while we're not in the sickness yes um, and I say that deliberately rather than illness and when somebody is not sick mm -hmm. 
at that point in time, they are an ex whatever the problem was. Yeah. So then, but if, you, if I was to go into an NA meeting and I say, I'm Paul and I'm an ex addict, yeah. Mm. It will cause like people will be having heart attacks all over. Yeah. Oh, it's a real. There's a real culture that yeah. oh, once right. once an addict always an addict. There's yeah. a real cu okay. culture of we've got a progressive incurable illness and it's never going to go away and we've got that forever and and it, and I think there's this culture where we perpetuate that belief. Okay. And 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 the mm. and the people who fight mm. against, fight against the people who stand against it who say the alternative they're very much in a minority. And it's very much a, it causes it causes concern when people try to have that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. adopt that belief system. Well, that, that can be transcended. You see, mm. I mean, it's just it just uh, whichever way you want to do it. You know, either you can like just adopt it, or you can just sort of say I'm recovered, or yeah. I'm a grateful yeah. member. And I, I know lots of people say I'm a grateful member or I've recovered or whatever it Sometimes is. Sometimes I'm a disgruntled member. Yeah. Disgruntled member. <laughs> really, to be honest, I mean, people accept it generally. Uh, if mm. I just say I'm a member or a grateful mm. member. I think I've even heard John Charlie saying something like that, as in being recovered yeah. from the obsession, from the allergy. Well, actually, the cycle, it, was the, it was the people you know? who did the John Charlie Big Book study who started using the term. Yeah. Covered, well, so. which kind of, I think it kind of makes sense if if you're, well, it all makes sense what yeah. you said, but it, you get recovered from that cycle, that allergy of the body, yeah, 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 obsession yeah, yeah, yeah. of the mind, you know, that complete insane mm -hmm. cycle. You get recovered from that, but then there's the, all the rest, you know, all the, you know, the which often is often the human condition rather than mm -hmm. it's like it's if you become. At any point in your life, and I use alcohol as the best as, a, as an example. If you become an alcoholic, and you surrender your alcoholism, and you go through the steps, and you release that compulsion to drink, and you get rid of that, mm. it when it's been, it says it in the AA book, the problem has been removed. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean to say the problem had. It doesn't say the problem has been quashed or the problem has been put on terms is removed and removed means got rid of. Mm. Now, in my own, it's like I haven't had alcohol for thirty one years. But that doesn't mean to say I'm, I'm not worried. It's like it doesn't mean to say that along the um, along the line there hasn't been other stuff that's presented itself yeah. that I've and that could be anything from binging on box set TV shows. Yeah. Now I don't think anybody really ends up homeless or or um, or robbing from or from department stores or whatever in order to pay for a Netflix addiction, <laughs> but. It, it, because it, yeah. this addictive, compulsive, repetitive behaviour is something that I believe nearly all human beings do at some point. So when I, when I, use, I use the term sickness deliberately because I see it more of a, a human sickness, the human condition, when we become mm. disconnected mm. from source and we just go yeah. into repetitive compulsive behaviour in order to yeah. escape that. So to, to I also think that there's another mm. level. I mean, I mean, it is... Yeah. I mean, there is a group culture and I, I tend to go along with the group culture, but even if I mm. think it... Even if I would think it didn't apply to me, I would go along with the group culture That's because, right. because um, mm. it's it's in the interest of the highest good of the whole. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like um, you know, probably Buddha doesn't need to go work the twelve step program at that level, um, but for the average people and the level of spirituality that they get to, for for the most majority of them, it's a mm. good idea for them to keep going back. Mm to those meetings. So I don't usually, um, even if I, you know, I wouldn't really go into esoteric stuff because for the average man, those kind of groups and the average philosophy for the whole is quite useful. So challenging it for me in that context, challenging out of that context in a different group mm. is different, but challenging it in the context mm. because, um, you know, if you've got someone but yes, you know, like uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins says it, you know, the energy field of 12-step groups is at un the vibration of unconditional love. Anyone who's below that field, generally speaking, and that's a pretty high level of spirituality, anyone below that field really does need to go back to those groups continuously to be under the mm -hmm. umbrella of those people and those, those, that culture for the rest of their life because they're not going to... But anyone who transcends in their own personal uh, spiritual involvement, which is quite advanced, so you're getting into the high saints, um, 
they don't know. Of course, if they go from like an alcoholic to a high saint, they don't need to do that and go back and say that they're subject to that. But, um, but that's, that's a very small, slim minority. And, mm -hmm. but for the, for the, for the, so, and even if, I, even if I believed I transcended the group, I still wouldn't say that in there because most of these people are not going to put in that level of mm -hmm. spiritual commitment mm -hmm. to get to that level. And I have no fear of saying like I'm an overeater or something, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. there has no, it has no, no fear or attachment or I re reprogrammed, uh, reprogrammed into that. But on, a, on the thing of like, probably not the, you it's know, case. this is a case of levels, isn't it? It's a case of levels, and it's a case of the context of the situation. I can see what Paul is saying, but I can totally see where you're coming from. So it is really a matter. Yeah. And the goal is service. Always, uh, the goal is service. So yeah. If, yeah. If it helps to be of service to say, I'm composing a bit, or why not, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you see it from different. You know, you can see it in a different light. Mm -hmm. um, Thing of like social life. Um, so I can understand. So the, although, the, the, on the other hand, I mean, I can see totally what Paul is saying. Yes. So it's, it's, it's a belief system. So you, in some ways, if you're repeating it each time you go there, unless you're a kind of at high, much higher vibration, you can pick up the belief system too. If no. You keep saying, you know, that I'm a no, you, whatever. You, you, it's you, a belief system that you can no, pick you up. No, you wouldn't, if because it's a whole twelve-step package in culture. Mm -hmm. You're, you're not. You can have people saying, I'm an alcoholic there after 50 years. There's absolutely no problem with them mm -hmm. suddenly becoming an alcoholic. If they're like helping others and going to meetings and, and uh, being helpful, I mean, grace, I mean, there, there's an infinite grace in the universe. You know, with, with that level of intention, spiritual intention, you're not going to become an alcoholic. But there is what goes with this announcement of I am an alcoholic is this perpetuated idea that if they don't go to meetings after a period of time they're going to end up drinking again. Yes. Mm. And that isn't, mm. I, I know from experience that that is some, some, some kind of a guilt true. really in a way. It's not, not, it's not so much guilt, it is such a belief in the... So Bill W, when he formed Alcoholics Anonymous, mm. came to the conclusion after, and this wasn't a scientific conclusion, but it came to the conclusion that alcoholism was an incurable disease, mm. and, he, and he used the word disease, that was going to be with us forever unless we have a regular ongoing spiritual in, in, um, intervention. Yeah. And and so what you will have now is people who will be going, oh, if I don't go to meetings, I'm going to end up drinking again. Uh -huh. And there is that. So it's, it's perpetuated this whole mm -hmm. unconfirmed and unscientific idea that you've got this incurable disease that it can only be arrested by the culture of the meetings and if you stop going and remove yourself mm. from it this disease is yes. going to come back which to makes life. sense mm. when you're doing you're not doing any other kind of spiritual yeah. work yeah you yeah. need that yes. up yeah. Uh, yeah. lifting that vibrational uplifting that happens yeah 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 mm. so it gives you enough momentum until the next and time, that's the, the next thing time. and that kind of is where the the questions yeah. that's how the questions led together when you are doing other spiritual work yes to find that energy that matters is that where you've got the because you've got all the benefits of the social aspects and everything yes. else that got, which is absolutely amazing in the 12th mm -hmm. best in energy yeah? so then to take that energy outside and to bash bump into the real world the rest of the mm. real world it's all real or all unreal look at it yeah. mm. uh, and then you and, and then to and sort of to try, try to match that level of community uh -huh. without all the dogma mm. and i reckon you so, attract people along yeah. the way well, you know, I, th I think um, for people who don't need it, they intuitively know when they're ready to leave, uh, and they do, or they do other other things. Mm. But on the question, I, mean, I think uh, if you want to get out of the the dogma of the twelve steps, I mean, what about things? I mean, there's things like Buddhist groups or mi mindfulness groups, or or the so of course in miracles groups. I mean, there's so many different types of things without that heavy. I mean, you know, because you know, we're dealing with alcoholics, drug addicts. I mean, mm. of course, in miracles groups, you might get regular people, but Buddhist groups, I think, probably have a have a beautiful cross section and, and probably can socialise. I think they try and, you know, they try and be nice to each other mm -hmm. and practice compassion. So, is that one of the like, saying in Buddhism, one of the three jewels is sangha, which is like spiritual friendship. So yeah, so spiritual community. Yeah. So like, I think Bud I think Buddhism probably sounds like a great community and they're probably not all cocaine addicts, alcoholics and uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe don't want to throw a crystal at you. They also can't be boring. <laughs> it, it can't be boring. So, 
So the, yeah, yeah, there's so much, there's so so, much, so many groups to explore. Yeah, I, I, I personally think if I wasn't in twelve steps, I'd probably be going to a lot of Buddhist groups. Uh, I think that that sounds good. But I'm sure, of course in miracles. I mean, yes, of course I love course in miracles groups. There's lots of them. They don't tend to, I mean, I'm sure the Buddhist community is much bigger than the course in miracles mm. community. But yeah, I just hang around and, and get to meet people and, and develop a good good social circle. And I also think, oh, sorry, I also think that. Yep. It is good to have diversity. Like, I, there's certain things mm. in terms of spirituality that will not open that book with certain people, and that doesn't mean that 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 those people uh, don't bring amazing stuff to my life, and it's not good to hang around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's certain things that I won't just say. Maybe because I'm being judgmental, I don't know. But I know that once I got into that a little bit. The message was there wasn't a communication. There wasn't much nothing from that. So I just refrained from that. Yes. Um, oh, thank you. You you refrained from the things that didn't need to be said. Sort of thing. Yeah.